Hey guys, what is going on? I thought I'll record a quick vlog while I have here with you a few minutes. Uh, I'd like to talk about graph databases. I get a lot of questions to kind of discuss uh, graph databases, uh, you know, you know, for J, Arogo, so many others. And the term graph database is kind of intimidating when you never heard about graph databases before. I, I'll be frank with you that I don't really know much about the internals of graph databases, but if we really sit down and think, the use cases of a GraphQL, not GraphQL, graph databases is so unique, right? But and it comes down to traversing nodes right through associations effectively, right? It's like okay, I'm, I'm, I'm my friend, I have these number of friends and I want to know their friends and this is one kind of a graph. Uh, another kind of a graph is kind of a uh, like an electric network. Right? Uh, or, or any other kind of graph that has some sort of association if you think about it. But when you really think about it, why cannot you build, or, or maybe just reverse the question, can you actually build a graph solution using relational, good old relational model, you know, just tables and columns? Can you do that? And the answer is yes, absolutely, right? Because it's like, what, what is, what is these associations effectively? What are these relationships? It's nothing but you can just present them as rows. And I'm not saying that this is the most optimal way, right? This is what always comes down to, right? Is this the most optimal way to represent this use case, these relationships? Right? It's the, the traversal of a graph could go, you know, in a, in a, in a deep, uh, what do you call this, uh, depth first versus breadth first. And this could result in a completely different uh, query plan, in a completely different I.O. at the end of the day. So I can see us building a graph-based application using pure SQL relation, right? For that matter, even no SQL, right? But the reason I'm making this vlog is at the end of the day, everything when it comes to databases is, is boils down to this. You're reading to disk or you are writing to disk, right? You're writing to disk to store information. And you're reading from disk, right, the information that you wrote in order to search for a specific piece of data that you are looking for. And you might do some post-processing on the data that you read. And that's what you are constrained with. Forget about anything else and the and the above, right? Whether now this I.O. that you're doing, you're constrained with that. This is the constraints that you're playing with. If this is a game, then these are the rules of the game, the I.O. And everybody is just now have to play with the rules. There are limitations to how many I.O.s you can make. And there are limitations to the medium of the, where, where, from which you're reading or writing, right? The storage medium. And relational databases came first and built a generic way, kind of a general purpose way of, hey, here's, here's a table. There's a bunch of rows. And the rows are stored uh, in the table and if you really look deep down, they are pages and they are organized, well, depending on your, on your storage model, let's say you're, you have a row-based 
row store. That means the rows are literally just consequently one of the other, or other right? So you have the row, column one, column two, column three, column three, four. And then the next row comes in and then you just, just string after the other. They're strawed up, right? They, they just compacted. If you're doing it this way, then a read will usually just read one page from disk and you get X amount of rows back, right? That, that's, that's the math, that's the logic, that's the constraint. And now you play games, right? Because if you have many, 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 many columns in your table, then you only kind of get fewer number of rows in a given page. Because if you have like a blob and a string and other, so many fields, then the row will just span larger and larger. So a single I.O. will only give you fewer rows. So if you need more rows, you have to do more I.O. Okay? And that's why people built column-based storage, right, where they store the columns first, right? Uh, so all the columns come first, like for the same uh, column, the values are stored first, and then the next column, right? And uh, this gives you very nice use cases in case of uh, you're doing aggregation, for example, I want to do a sum. So, hey, very nice, sum on, on the salary. Hey, the columns of the salary are literally next to each other. So if you do a read, you get, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 salaries with one I.O. Beautiful. So now, this is the game we're playing. Graph databases, while I don't know how they actually work, my guess is if I start researching, yeah. they're playing this game. That is That must be it. They're playing a game. How do I store and retrieve my data so that my voice one single I.O. gives me exactly what I want, right? So if, I am, if I'm a person, give me all the, my friends, I need to store the data in this manner, in desk, right? So that if I ask for my friends, I go to this data structure, and then pull the information and gives me a lot of data of what I need in one I.O. And that's the power right there. And then you can obviously build smart indexes on top of this heap because I was just talking about the heap, the actual raw data. Now we can build smart, really genius indexes that can solve traversals you can store the data in a certain way right and then you can store the data in a different way you can build many indexes so if, if you want to do a bird first you search this index if you want to do depth first you search this index so i believe you can definitely right the so the reason i'm making this video this vlog is just to talk about graph databases is a unique use case and they their existence exists because of the graph use case so yes they are definitely very critical and that's the game they're playing and why i want to talk about uh, why i want I'm, I'm kind of building up from bottom to top is for you guys to kind of always break down everything because if you hear about these things first it feels intimidating, but when you break down everything to its basic, fundamental things, it's really not rocket science at the end of the day, right? And that's that's what I want to talk about here. And NoSQL is exactly the same. We don't play any other game. The game is how can I... Uh, the NoSQL game was built to solve a different problem with, 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 with the frustration that the deliver, developers got from this monstrosity, monstrosity that is called ORM, object relation or mapping. You know, all this stuff, the, the leaky abstraction, the N plus one problems that we get into. And, and they try to solve this problem to make the API as easy as possible. No scheme. I don't really care about schema anymore. Give me something simple. 
give me a document. I want to give, I'm just, I want to read, give me a document. And my document can change. Yeah, fields, and they put that. And nothing wrong with that either. So, a lot of people ask me, what, what, should, I say, what should I use? Should I use this or should I use this? I really don't know. It really depends on what you're trying to do. To me, the, the flexibility of a relational database is everything I need because I know how it works. I can build anything with that. It's like a Lego blocks, right? Lego blocks, the relational database model is a Lego block. It has a flexibility. As long as the relational database gives me the these two things, if it gives me column store versus uh, raw store and more pretty, even if it gives me the choice of the tree data structure, whether B tree, LSM, uh, What's this new thing that is called the Bren indexes? Things like that. These tools, the more tools I get in my relational databases, that's, that's a personal choice. Obviously, graph, graph databases, if you go with that route, then most of the work is done for you. But again, I will not use a graph database personally if I don't know how exactly it works because if I know how it works, then I know what it is, what what it doesn't work for, what use cases collapse for these use cases. But yeah, it was kind of a rambling vlog, I know, guys. But the whole thing really is just an understanding of the basic models. And uh, yeah, let's keep that vlog show. Gonna see you in the next one, guys. Last one.